everybody. Welcome to the Bible with Joe McGee. We are making great progress. We're in the book of Leviticus, which is the slow moving train. But it's really interesting because everybody needs to read it once. So you understand what God was requiring of the people of Israel and why he required it. Because God had a reason for everything he did. Could have been a form of something or a shadow of something, but he had a reason. So today we're picking up in Leviticus chapter 16 called the Day of Atonement, which is critical. It's really good. So uh, Leviticus 16, verse 1, the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, who had died sort of tragically because they got involved in stuff they shouldn't have done, who died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. The Lord said to Moses, warn your brother Aaron not to enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. If he does, he will die. For the ark's cover, the place of atonement is there, and I myself am present in the cloud above the atonement cover. So God's there in person. He said, you can't just walk in here. You have to walk in as a priest and do the right sacrifices. Uh, even the priest had a rope tied around their ankle in case they dropped dead and they were in there because nobody go in. But if you went in, you dropped dead. So if he wasn't moving around, he said, hey, Frank, you still there? If he didn't answer, you should grab the rope and pull him out. And so uh, uh, he says, so when Aaron uh, enters the sanctuary area, he must follow these instructions fully. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put on his... He must put on his linen tunic and the linen undergarments worn next to his body. He must tie the linen sash around his waist and put the linen turban on his head. These are sacred garments, so he must bathe himself in water before he puts them on. Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He's not even gone in yet. You understand all the instructions? There's a reason. God had a symbolic reason for everything he did. Sin kills. God cannot go where sin is at. God is sinless, so he can't go where sin is. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, make them right with the Lord. Then he must take two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which will carry the sins of the people into the wilderness, Aaron would then present as a sin offering the goat chosen by lot for the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat chosen by lot, will be sent away and be kept alive, standing before the Lord. When it is sent away into the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right with the Lord. We're going to cover a goat with blood, and then we're sending them off in the wilderness. As long as that goat's alive, they're going to be purified before God. It's just real important. And I'm sure people thought, well, what if somebody accidentally kills the goat? What if the goat gets lost? God's in charge of the goat. So it's real good. Said uh, Then he will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family. Then he will fill an incense burner with burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. He will then take two handfuls of fragrant powder incense and will carry the burner and the incense beyond the inner curtain. There in the Lord's presence, he will put the incense on the burning coals so that a cloud of incense will rise over the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant. If he follows these instructions, he will not die. <laughs> now, can you imagine? It's your day. It's like, in your father, it's like, now what was, it's like, I would be a guy like, hey, can you read those instructions one more time? Uh, but sure, I got it down pat. Because if you don't follow them, you're going to die. It's real serious. He must sprinkle blood seven times with his finger in front of the atonement cover. Then Aaron must slaughter the first goat as a sin offering for the people, carry its blood beyond the inner curtain. He would then sprinkle the goat's blood over the atonement cover in front of it, just as he did with the bull's blood. Through this process, he will he will purify the most holy place, and he will do the same thing for the entire tabernacle because of the defiling sin and rebellion of the Israelites. No one else is allowed inside the tabernacle. When Aaron enters in for the purification ceremony in the most holy place, no one may enter in until he comes out again after purifying himself and his family and all the congregation. 
I remember when I first started teaching, um, I was in a great Christian school. I was a school administrator and I would teach chapel and, uh, we taught a lot of great things, good subjects, but I realized some, the kids did not know the Bible. These are Christian kids, spirit filled in a very successful Christian school. But I realized something, they didn't know the Bible. So I said, you got to, we only came with one book. You need to read the book. And so I started, I said, well, we're going to start in Genesis. We're going to go all the way to Revelation in nine months. And so we skipped over a few things, but pretty much we hit every major subject. And people said, where'd you learn the Bible? I said, well, I've taught chapel um, 171 days a year for 10 years. And I went through the Bible 10 times in 10 years. And so that's kind of like, that's basically where I learned. And I got two degrees in theology. I love what I learned, but I learned the Bible, teaching it to young people. Because you remember what you teach. Uh, God will use you in things you've been through and things you experience, personal things, and they'll become very real to you. So Aaron wants to make sure he does everything exactly as he was told to do. So then Aaron will come out, purify the altar that stands before the Lord. And he will do this by taking some of the blood from the bull and the goat putting on each of the horns of the altar, then must sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times over the altar. And that way he will cleanse it from Israel's defilement and make it holy. Verse 20. When Aaron has finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present the live goat. He will lay both of his hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the wickedness, all the rebellion, and all the sins of the people of Israel in this way. He will transfer the people's sins to the head of the goat. So it's very symbolic. Why are you laying hands on that goat? Because all the bad stuff you've done, all the sins you've committed, I'm putting on this goat's head. There's a transference. So what we do in the New Testament, we can come boldly to the throne of grace, get mercy up in time of need. What are you, getting, what are you looking for? Mercy. Did you earn it? No, I didn't earn it, but God will give it if I asked for it. When Aaron goes back into the tabernacle, he must take off the linen garments uh, he was wearing when he entered the most holy place. He must leave the garments there. Then he must bathe himself with water in a sacred place, put on his regular garments, and go out to sacrifice a burnt offering for himself, a burnt offering for his people. Through this process, he will purify himself and the people, make them right with the Lord. He must then burn all the fat of the sin offering on the altar. There's so much symbolism here that's amazing. And everybody's watching, like, but you got to do it right, man, because my sins, I'm hanging in the balance. The priest has got to cut me covered. Now, today, we don't we don't need a priest. We can come bold to the throne of grace on our own. But back then, they needed the priest to do this. Verse 26, the man chosen to drive the scapegoat into the wilderness must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Then he may return to the camp. The bull and the goat presented as a sin offering whose blood Aaron takes into the most holy place for purification ceremony will be carried outside the camp. The animal's hides, internal organs, and dung all are to be burned. Is this detailed enough for you? You know, I'm going to burn the poop. I'm going to burn it all. Then uh, the man who burns him must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water before returning to the camp. Everybody's got to clean up before you did it. You got to clean up after you did it. It's a process. It's very visual. The people know. They're all, everybody's watching. On the 10th day of the appointed month in early autumn, you must deny yourselves. Neither native-born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings of purification will be made for you, and you'll be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day to, of complete rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. This is a permanent ruling. Now, this is where people get confused. And, uh, I've met people all over the country traveling for years, uh, even when I was an engineer. Um, we're not under the old covenant anymore. The old covenant was done away with when Jesus died on the cross. We now have a new and a better covenant. The old covenant was good. It was lawful. God set it up. God said, you do this exactly as I said, then you'll be forgiven. But we now have a new and better covenant said in future generations, the purification ceremony will be performed by the priest who has been anointed and ordained to serve as high priest in the place of his ancestor Aaron. He will put on the holy garments, purify the most holy place in the tabernacle, the altar, the priest, and the entire congregation. This is a permanent law for you. 
to purify the people of Israel from their sins, making them right with the Lord once each year. Moses followed these instructions exactly as the Lord had commanded him. And so um, it was a very detailed process. God had it laid out, and they followed it. And every year you went through the same process. And every year people would know. I mean, it's like if you, they didn't have calendars, they had one. It's coming. What's coming? The day, the day of atonement, where we get forgiven of our sins. Because we all knew, everybody knew what they did wrong. Everybody knows what they do wrong. And they realized, man, I got I to gotta make sure I'm covered. Got to make sure the priest does it right. The priest can't drop dead in there. He's got to make sure he dresses right and he goes through the process right, lays hands on the goat right, and anoints it with blood right. It's, it's got to be done correct because sin has death attached to it. It's in the Bible, New Testament. Sin has death attached to it. It kills. The devil steals, kills, and destroys. But God's made a way. In the New Testament, we have been bought with a price. The Son of God, Jesus, came to earth as a man and died for our sins. Jesus never sinned. He didn't deserve to die. He died on the cross for us. We had sinned. He's hanging there in our place. He took our punishment. Jesus took our punishment on the cross, died, went in the belly of the earth, went to hell for three days, came back, was raised to the dead. Mary saw him. And uh, even Jesus warned her when she, he came out of the grave, don't touch me. I'm not a sinner to my father and your father, my God and your God. What's he doing? He said, I have to take my blood to the mercy seat in heaven. And there is a mercy seat in heaven with Jesus' blood on it. And it's not ever dried up. It's still there fresh. So whenever God looks at me, whenever I pray, that's why the Bible says, I come boldly to the throne of grace, get mercy up and I'm in need. Whenever I pray, God looks next to him. He sees the mercy seat in heaven, his son's blood on it. That pays the price for me. I can come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy. What's mercy? I don't deserve it. I've not earned it, but God will give it to me. I've shared this so many times. Blind Bartimaeus on the side of the road heard some noise one day. So what's that noise? What about healing rabbis coming down the road? Who? That healing rabbi, but doing all the miracles. So blind Bartimaeus begins to yell out, mercy, son of David, have mercy. And Jesus stopped in his tracks. And he turned, he looked, and the disciples said, don't pay any attention. He's just a crazy blind man. She said, no, no, this man's called out. And so Jesus walks over the blind man and says, sir, what can I do for you? And Peter tried to help me out. Well, Lord, he doesn't have any eyeballs. And Jesus said, Peter, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the blind man. Blind men, what can I do for you? Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John never ministered to anybody without asking, what can I do for you? Because he's God on earth as a human, but he's God. All things are popular to him that believes, but he's limited by what we believe he can do. Yes. Do you believe I can do this? Yes. And he got his eyeballs back. He got his sight. And they drug him down to the Sanhedrin later on that day. And they, and the Roman soldiers and the religious people grew up. Do you believe this guy's the son of God? Great answer in the Bible. He says, I don't know. All I know is once I was blind and now I see. It was the mercy of God. He said, listen, I don't know. I just know I, I can see now. The guy healed me. Is he the son of God? I don't know. I know I can see. So it's incredible what God's trying to do to humans on earth that got lost back in the Garden of Eden when Adam knew sin. They got fired from the job, a victim from the house. Kids start killing one another. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's what we're reading about, the curse of the law in Leviticus, the curse of the law. You do this, this happens. You don't do this, this happens. You do this, this happens. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law by the blood of Jesus. I can now run boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy and help in time of need. God loves and accepts, accepts me just like I am. It's a great day to be alive, guys. Great day to be alive. Thanks for listening. Tune in next time. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.